All right, today I'm going to show you how to tune a 1S Whoop, 65mm 1S Whoop, your traditional tiny Whoop brushless setup. It also works unbrushed, but uh, we're going to use Betaflight 4.1 and the configurator 10.6 and sliders to do a really simple tune. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail about everything else that I set up, um, but this will give you a great basis for almost any 1S whoop sized um, quad to get it up and flying. And then some tips and tricks on what I what I do uh, to troubleshoot. All right, so let's get it set up. This is a basic um, PID tuning set up the defaults for beta flight and the first thing that we're going to do is this is not rpm nor there's the, this is not an rpm tune it works on jesc if you have 48 kilohertz but you might have to tweak settings um, from 48 kilohertz if you're using that versus a tune if it's only using the 24 kilohertz or non jesc this is the hummingbird from newbie drone so it's using 4.1 and out of the box here's how it's set up the first thing that I'm going to do is I don't use D-min. Um, I think D-min adds a little bit of jitters on its own, and in 4.1 it's not quite as robust as it is in 4.2. I might revisit it for 4.2, but for now, don't use D-min on your whoop. All right, so you've turned that off, and it's going to be super simple. We're going to figure this out um, because it's all about your P to D ratio. And on whoops, that P to D ratio is one to one or thereabouts, a little bit less. What does that mean? What that means is that your proportional, which is at 42 for roll, and your derivative is at 20. Right now, that is not a one to one ratio. A one to one ratio would be 42 here, 42 here. Now we're gonna use sliders to get that closer. So how do we do that? First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna find this P to D balance. And what we're going to do, what this does, is this changes P in 4.1. In 4.2, I believe, it changes D. But this, the principle is exactly the same. We are going to change this ratio so that it's more of a one-to-one. -one. And as you see, you drag it all the way to the right, and now we are at 21 and 20. This is just less. And that's exactly where we want it. But you say, that's really low for a whoop on PIDs. Yes, it is. So what we're going to do now is we could just raise the master multiplier, but what we're going to do is to keep this P, I, and D ratio, which is really good for whoops, is we're just going to take this, and what this does is this takes P and D and raises them together with the 0.5 ratio in mind. So now we're up to 42, 85, and 40. This is a really good formula for whoops um, for most of them. So we're here, but that's still really low. P and D ratio, or sorry, P and D numbers for a whoop. So we're going to go up here to the master multiplier, and it's really simple. You just take it all the way to the right. So you've gone right, left, right. You're going to get this caution up here. Um, that's usually for bigger quads. I haven't had any problems, but yes, be careful. Have runaway uh, prevention turned on so that you test all of this stuff. Now, you here's the thing is you will have to tweak these for some quads, but I'll get to that in just a second. You're only halfway done. That is just your P, I, and D setup. So you have done very simply, gone right, left, right, master multiplier you're at in the 80s, very high P and D, and I for a whoop. You've changed the, bow, the P to D balance to a one to one, and you've increased the P and D gain all the way. But what do we need to do now? We need to go into filters. And I would love to tell you, I'm going to turn this back on so it is by default. I would love to tell you that this should just work, that sliders will get this close. And you can use sliders, but the problem is um, you don't need these second ones. And when you do that and you turn them off, your sliders go away. So you can do a lot to get the sliders close, but it's just some more simple to use numbers in this case. So turn these off. These numbers are actually pretty darn close. And what I'm going to show you is what I think are the best filtering that I've used for beta flight from a really long time ago when I first started all the way up into this version. It just works. So 
No RPM necessary. Turn this on and do 200 to 400, and then go 100 to 200. Now, obviously, if you have black box, look at all of this stuff. But if you don't, and you want to just get a good tune out of the box and go fly, um, this is going to get you 90% there on almost any whoop. I've taken these filterings from a 1S 603-16K whoop all the way up to a toothpick-sized 1103 8000 KV on 2S, and it's worked great. Um, I think it works better than RPM filtering. Super simple, wish I could use sliders for it. Can't, so just 200, 400, 100, 200. And back here, you have gone 2.5 and 2, or right, left, right, and you're good to go. Now go fly this, and you might find that it's a little hot. If it's a little hot, meaning that it, it's a little jittery when you are in acro and you have air mode on and it sits, you arm and it sits there and, and kind of rattles on the ground, this might be a little bit of a hot tune, but I don't mind. I'd rather tune a little hot and then dial back than have it really low and, and not know because it just feels loose. So go fly it. And on the Meteor, for example, this, the Meteor 65, this works perfect, as is perfectly fine, 16K um, 603, and uh, with um, Gemfan tri-blade props and Iashin quad blade props, works perfectly fine, HQ props, quad blade props as well. Also works 802.25K on a bi-blade, which is a, a cut down, uh, uh, Gemfan quad blade cut down to bi-blade, this tune works perfect. But on the Hummingbird, with its plaid motors and just the way it's set up, this was a little hot. So I went out and flew it, and yeah, it was just it just was a little too warbly. It was a little too hot. So the P to D ratio was fine. I just needed to come back in, and I really wish Betaflight had this in its OSD. And I went, okay, let's take it down to 1.9. And I went and flew, and it still was that way, just a little bit. So I came back, and I went 1.8. It felt like butter at that point. So I didn't have to change my P to D ratio. It was all about taking a hot tune and based on your props and your motors, dialing it back just a little, dialing back the performance, but your P to D ratio is pretty much the same. Um, you can get into other things. If you have bent props and you, know, you may have to play with the P to D balance, but really that's how I start 99% of my tunes in beta flight is I come in here with a whoop, somebody sends it to me, or I buy a new one, I go, I go right, left, right, do my filters, and I go fly, and then it really is, uh, my process starts here. Okay, dial it back to find the perfect P ratio on how hot it is. And then I start messing with other things, but for now, that's all I really want you to uh, worry about, is if you get a whoop and you want to basically get a really good tune for it with sliders, Betaflight has made it super, super easy. Don't worry about RPM. Don't worry about D-min. This is super simple. Um, the only other thing I would do is probably turn on VBAT PID compensation right now in 4.1 and then be good to go. So that's it. It's super simple. Um, that's how you get sliders working on a 1S 65 millimeter traditional brushless tiny whip and getting it flying awesome in Betaflight. Super simple, no fancy features just great use of sliders and filters that are simple and you should be ready to rock and roll. Um, I'll be covering more stuff later uh, on how you do stuff in Betaflight with sliders and how you might tweak things, but for now you can use that as a basis for 1S tuning on small tiny whoops and you can apply that as you go up uh, to bigger quads. All right, I hope that helped and we will talk to you in the next one.